Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for October 3rd, 2019. Well, what a punishing sell off day we had yesterday. Just a gap down, and it just kept running to the downside, smashing through, you know, support levels in the chart. Uh, driving on lower, finally picking up a little bit of support right in this area. But one thing I'm concerned about here on the market is that we are so very, very close to the 200 day moving average on the diamonds. It seems kind of unlikely that we won't eventually test that um, in this move down. Now we could get some kind of a little bit of a relief rally and a bounce rally, and I'll tell you why I think that's possible. This morning we're looking at futures poking up just a little tiny bit. Um, we're wavering around here as we head into um, a busy day on the economic calendar and um, just issues, worries, and concerns about the new tariff increases going into effect in Europe. So it seems pretty logical to me that we um, have an opportunity that at least the Dow will test this 200 day moving average in the coming days. So let's watch that close. Now, if we do happen to catch a rally, I would be really, really careful here. Um, although we could make some money um, on, an, on a relief rally that could last a few days or something like that, we still have, in, in any kind of a rally, this is very suspect now at this point. Um, even a rally all the way back up into the 50-day uh, moving average could give us that failure um, right on down and just following this trend to the downside. So keep that in mind. Even if we do catch a nice little re relief rally, we're going to have to scrutinize that pretty carefully for that possibility of failure to move this on lower. You know, there's so much uncertainty that the market is dealing with. We have earnings coming, you know, fourth quarter earnings coming in around the corner. We have uh, the China um, negotiations set to resume here soon with new tariff increases set to increase on China um, uh, mid-month. We have um, uh, this new situation where the WTO, a World Trade Organization, agreed with the White House, clearing the path for the president to open um, another trade war front in Europe and proposing uh, $7.5 billion in new tariffs against Europe uh, beginning October 18th. So the market just has an awful lot to deal with here and trying to chew through all of this information. Um, we also, if you remember, um, have a pretty big day on the economic calendar today, and then we have that big employment situation number on Friday. All of these things combined can really... Um, it really leaves the market kind of um, wondering what to do. Um, how are we going to respond um, to this? Now, futures um, were up during uh, during the night. We had futures pushing nearly a hundred point gain um, early this morning, and now we're pretty close to flat as I'm recording this. Um, uh, all of these pressures coming in. We've got Asia. Um, Asia markets were mixed last night, mostly lower. European markets are struggling to hold on to um, any positive gains. They're they're mixed over there as all of this stuff um, circulates. So kind of keep a close eye on this and be really careful. I wouldn't just assume that we're going to catch an immediate relief rally. Um, we're going to have to watch that price action very closely. And I still think that possibility of further downside um, is in play here. If we take a look at the SPY, the SPY is holding s substantially above its 200-day moving average. And if we were to draw a trend line across here, you can see we do still hold on to this little trend up here, but we certainly are in a very technically damaged situation in this chart. And it really wouldn't be a big reach um, considering all the new uh, information on uh, European tariffs and things like that coming out that we would slip below there and maybe head toward that 200-day moving average. Wouldn't be a big reach at all. And if we do happen to catch that rally, just keep in mind that we just have lots of resistance up here now, lots of technical damage that's going to have to be repaired. And it's unlikely, unless we have something major change in the news, if we get a 
trade deal with China, if we something changes that is very, very positive, I wouldn't expect this to just be leaping um, right back higher. So be really careful here um, in this market. Let's take a look at the cues. Cues. And by the way, this is what I've been warning about for some time to be really careful and cautious as we approach these new highs. And I kept pointing out the importance of these failures that were occurring um, in these charts. And so um, there is concern here, guys, and there's there's reason to be a little bit worried um, about the market we have. If we pull this back, we have those potentials of head and shoulder top type patterns being created in this market and um, issues could be uh, with the uh, you know economic news starting to show cracks in the U.S. economy. Um, they might be beginning to emerge here. So let's keep an eye on this um, really closely and keep in mind that if I draw this trend in here on this chart, notice that the NASDAQ has actually failed that trend. So any bounce back up into this area um, is going to raise questions as to whether or not this could fail and just continue to um, build this trend to the downside. So watch that closely. That 200 day moving average below could start drawing pretty heavily on the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM just, wow, just came apart, um, unraveled here. We've come back down here and we've tested this real critical low and so far yesterday had a nice little bounce back to that but remember a hammer pattern is only a valid hammer pattern if it gets a follow-through and this morning we're looking at the nat or the iwm um, gapping a little bit lower up at the open so we may not get that follow-through of that potential bottoming pattern and if that were to slip if we weren't able to hold this level of support in here on um, IWM I just want you to notice there's a very deep hole underneath here if we happen to fail and right now all of our lower highs and failing across here certainly doesn't warrant a whole lot of warm and fuzzy feeling in IWM let's take a look at um, the VIX the VIX increasing that fear yesterday and, and what I've uh, talked about several times is my worry that if we happen to hold on to this price level of support and see that fear come in and I've talked about you know the breaking of this downtrend um, as being a bit worrisome as well. Well, now that we've um, uh, experienced that fear, jumped up here pretty sharply, any kind of rest or pullback that holds um, this trend, holds this support in here, we'll have to watch pretty carefully. And that's where that relief rally can come in. We get that little relief rally, kind of easing the pressure for a short period of time. And then it um, that volatility expands back out, that fear expands back out to the upside. So we'll want to watch that closely if that were to occur. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is probably our best indicator of hope that um, we have at least reached a short term over sold condition. And when I say short term, relief rallies can be really, um, really brief. Uh, they can be one day, two day um, events that really don't have to move very far. Remember, a relief rally can be nothing more than a little bit of a bump up, maybe a consolidation as, um, as it sets up for more downside move. So Keep that in mind. A relief rally can be very finicky and uh, very fickle things. So watch that close, closely. But even though we are down here in this bearish reversal zone, it's going to depend on how the news comes out and our news driven market and how the market responds to these new European tariffs going into effect later this month. So pretty interesting situation for us to deal with here. But what it does show us is if we can co collect a, a relief rally, get some kind of a relief rally, that we certainly have plenty of upside potential if we can get that relief rally going. And, you know, it's possible if we had a news event, they could trigger a short squeeze, uh, squeezing out all of those short traders um, holdings and, and, and maybe um, really pushing a, a substantial rally. Those happen an awful lot when we reach oversold conditions as well. 
well. So we're going to have to stay very, very focused to price action here, not try to predict where this market's going to go. Just stay focused to that price action, trade what you see in the chart, and be willing to take your profits quickly because this market has that uh, propensity to just flip on a dime on any news report. Very news-driven market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar today because our economic calendar does have a considerable amount to say um, about the market today. If we look here, we have jobless claims at 830. Obviously, jobless claims is a big number for the market and can move us around. We also have, you know, Fed speakers continuing with their little parade that they've been going on. One, two, three, four Fed speakers uh, today. And then we have several tomorrow with um, the chairman himself speaking. So that parade continues uh, tomorrow. Keep waving uh, as it continues to pass by. But we'll have to watch carefully this. Uh, jobless claims number and then um, these numbers uh, I think may have a little bit more impact today than normal uh, with the market being a little bit concerned about global growth uh, factory orders the consensus for co factory orders is that it will go negative uh, consensus estimate is that it will go negative today so we might want to watch that one closely at 10 a.m. and then the ISM remember it was our ISM report over here that really shook the market um, on the manufacturing side this is the services sector and right now um, um, consensus is suggesting it will decline slightly but hold up pretty well so we'll want to watch that and hopefully there's no surprises in there of course the natural gas report unlikely to move the market around and then we have the fed balance sheet later on today unlikely to move the market what you're wanting going to want to consider though when you're planning your risk forward is remembering that tomorrow morning before the market open we have this big employment situation number and international trading goods those two are pretty big reports and so consider your risk carefully as you head into friday they report before the open and there won't be anything that we can do as retail traders to um to hedge off any problems that could occur on those numbers so watch that closely let's take a look at our earnings calendar our earnings calendar we don't have a lot going on today on earnings but we do have a few companies 12 companies reporting and some key numbers that we'd want to pay attention to so STZ STZ will be reporting today. Looks like it already has and has missed on its report. Constellation Brands gapping lower this morning, as you can see. Our bid ask is down here. Um, uh, pretty substantial sell off here at the open. After the bell today, we have Costco. We'll have to be paying attention to Costco. Um, it has been down trending, kind of holding on to that 50 day moving average. So we'll want to watch that closely. And ISCA also reporting today. I don't ex think this is probably a major impacting um, um, stock at all, but one that you might want to pay attention to because it it is one of those notables on the day. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day, and I want to wish you great profits in your trading. If, if this is your first time seeing these videos, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube, and also click um, that bell icon when it pops up to make sure you're notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, guys, the purpose of these videos is not to predict anything. It's to remove all of the hype and all of the drama that you might be seeing in the news um, agencies and stuff like that. And I really want everyone to focus in on the fact that nobody cares about your money as much as you do. And you need to focus on the technicals of the chart in that price action. I truly, truly believe that price is king. And we can have all different kinds of things um, circulating, all different kinds of rumors and everything. And we get involved in speculating in this market. And it's very, very dangerous. Just focus carefully on the price action of that chart look at what it's telling us the possibilities and then plan your risk accordingly it gives you that uh, the purpose of this video is to give you that that calming effect I guess on how we want to look at those charts and how we might want to approach the market for the day and if you find this information helpful please do me a favor click that uh, thumbs up button and leave a brief comment because that helps me out a ton helps the growth of the, uh, the channel and I just want to say thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that you guys are awesome 
So let's take a look at a few stocks, and, and I'm going to say a few stocks that um, could be setting up um, trades that might be coming together. We're going to have to be very, very careful on these, um, the way the market is right now. And I'm going to, the first stock I'm going to show you is someone brought uh, brought it to my attention um, in our trading room yesterday. I hadn't even seen it. Um, take a look at LEVI. LEVI uh, coming up out of this bottom. We have a nice constructive pattern going on here in LEVI and a nice move up yesterday, um, you know, kind of... Uh, ignoring uh, the rest of the market. And if we take a look and mark this chart up a little bit, you can see some price support has been created right in here, those buyers stepping up. But one thing we also have to recognize pretty clearly is there's a significant level of resistance above here. And uh, we're gonna have to deal with that as we move on up. This is a nice productive pattern though, and Levi might be a place that you might wanna take a look. Um, I also noticed yesterday that there was a pretty uh, good setup in Foot Locker. Now, Foot Locker is a pullback. This is a rounded bottom breakout uh, pattern. We break above that 50 day moving average. And even though we've pulled back the last couple of days, I want you to notice that the selling kind of dried up here um, a little bit yesterday on this. And we're trying to hold this support level right through here. Now, we have to wait for buyers to come in, but if we were to get some kind of a buying move, in here, there could be that lower high um, trending uh, trade that could show up in here anytime soon. So watch that carefully if that were to occur. Foot Locker trying to show some signs, had some good earnings and um, could move on up here. So watch that one close. Might be a trade to keep an eye on. Goodyear Tire is, is one I think we could still keep an eye on even though it did have a significant selling um, in it. Now I was in this trade. I took a, a substantial 21% uh, gain on this. Uh, using options in this move I took it on this morning gap up and I still own half of that position so just just to be um, completely upfront with you I'm not trying to preach that this thing is ready to move on higher yet but it didn't completely collapse either we moved back down into this support area and we did get a little nice rally here at the end of the day so if that could follow through maybe move this up we and if we catch that relief rally in the market then we could have an opportunity opportunity for Goodyear Trier to continue to follow on through to the upside, but we'll have to wait and see. And it's it's a careful, careful balancing act that we have to do in these stocks um, nowadays. So watch those things closely. Um, seeing some good signs, um, if you take a look at um, GLD, GLD rallying back strongly, we still have a downtrend here in GLD, but that fear starting to come into the market, uh, breaking back above its 50 day moving average, if GLD can break on out of here, maybe hold that downtrend, there may be some opportunities here for uh, that upside move. However, if fear drops away from the market, if all of a sudden uh, things start clicking along like we want them to, we could even see this set up as that potential short failing in here uh, to possibly make new lows. So kind of keep an eye on that. Also saw, um, even though XLF itself um, saw some substantial selling, there are um, some stocks in, uh, not, not XLF, XL, um, XLU. Um, saw some substantial selling yesterday. Um, XLU still has a quite a few good companies within that um, ETF sector that are still looking very positive. And that's one of those safety sectors where folks run for a little bit of protection in a market like this. They're usually pretty good dividend payers. So we could still watch this. I wanna be really careful here though to uh, not get too carried away with this as well. Another place might be um, for a little bit of safety like like TLT, the, the 20 year bonds, uh, 20 year bonds, um, you, although we've had a, a substantial sell off here in those bonds, notice that they've picked up and now consolidated above its 50 day moving average. So we'll want to watch this in here. If fear starts to continue to creep in, we might suspect these bonds to start moving on up. So watch that pretty close. Uh, keep a close eye um, on some of those risk off. Uh, type trades if um, the selling really picks up and continues. 
So everyone, I hope you find that helpful. Remember, none of the charts that I mentioned in this video are a recommendation to buy or sell any security at all. They're meant for study and watch list. If, if uh, you're struggling as a trader, I want to encourage you to really dig in. And uh, remember, you don't have to trade every day. One of the fallacies uh, in trading is we become traders as unless you're an actual day trader you can stand aside swing and position traders don't have to trade every day and as a matter of fact our most important thing that we can do as a trader is remember our edge if you have a good trading plan that gives you an edge are you sticking with that are you holding to that or are you out there trading emotionally giving your capital back to the market in times of turmoil like this so be very very careful about that and it's okay to stand aside if you don't feel you have an edge and by the way I want to mention if there's anything that we can do to help um, uh, please make sure to check out the videos on this channel there's over 600 videos of free training if you're struggling as a trader you might find something there to really help you um, improve your trading results so with that everyone I want to wish you all the very very best have a great day and we'll talk to you all bright and early Friday morning take care now